Alright guys, we just uh, arrived here at Spotborough Point. The whole beach is full of boats. There's a couple of pockets on its way. We just drove up from uh, Park Rennie this morning. They did get one or two smaller shoals. And uh, I saw now there's a shoal around the corner here. So they have to come close enough for the boats to actually get the net around them. If they can't drag them from out far, then the chance is too big for the sharks and everything to, to bite your net, holes in your net. And uh, so everyone's standing waiting. Apparently this morning before the anglers were here, there were sharks swimming right here on the edge um, after the first net. And uh, there weren't any anglers yet. So I spoke to Ed Ken Marine, they're obviously as well one of the, the boats here. And uh, the whole thing now is to wait. Wait till they bring a net in, get a bait in the water, and uh, see if you can get tight. Now when you arrive on a beach like this and they've got a net out, your objective is to obviously buy a couple or get a couple of sods as quick as you can, fresh sods from there, and then get them out. We've still got from yesterday, I brought with, which will also work, but obviously your fresher uh, sods from that net and from that shoal, the current ones, will work better. So that's your main objective when you want to try and get something. Now, as you all know, this year was probably one of the best sardine runs that we're aware of in the last 20, maybe more years, with the sardines being around for two months already. Now, when it comes to chasing the sardines, it's driving up and down the beaches, phoning around, finding out where they are, either netting or where they're washing out. Now, for the sardine netters who have permits to do this, this is quite an exciting time, especially when it's such a good sardine run. Most of the sardines get sold off fresh on the day and a couple of fisheries will get stuck into freezing it quickly to preserve it for frozen resell. Nice and fresh guys. Now unfortunately Scottborough had a terrible bank in the back which made it difficult for any big fish to come over regardless of the sardines. Only here and there a bigger shark made it over. Regardless of that you still make sure you get a bait in the water quickly. Maybe, just maybe, there's a shark swimming around. Scottborough Beach, I got the call, the sharks are here. I'm on my BG 8000 and my Randa Elite 15 foot. I had a seven hour fight yesterday. I woke up this morning. I didn't want to fish, but uh, how can you pass these conditions? But I took two sardines, threw out a nice big shark trace, literally 30 meters, and we are on. And as it happens, everybody spotted one shark swimming in the shallows and Rock was quickly to put a bait close to it. Luckily, there weren't a lot of anglers around yet, which made chances of landing this fish a bit easier. As well as there weren't a lot of sharks swimming around that could bite you off either. With these bigger fish, it is essential that you have the right tackle. Good fish. And with that I mean terminal tackle, the right rod that gives you the pulling capacity to move a bigger fish. Just gotta hang on. And a reel with a proper drag especially. This plays a huge role when fishing with braid. The Daiwa Saltus is true to that. Obviously with the action, several anglers arrived. Then it takes some running around and weaving to make sure that your fish doesn't cut off. out there consideration is essential but I must add that in South Africa most anglers are quite considerate when someone else is fighting a bigger fish. If Rock was alone on the beach with no other anglers there was no need to follow this fish you just keep the pressure and each time it turns towards the beach you gain line but if there's a lot of anglers like this you have to follow your fish. over the bank now, coming to the closing stages. I've got this reel loaded with Dawa J-Braid 30 pound underneath. 
and on top I've got about 200 meters of 80 pound multi-colored Dawa Jailbreak. This stuff is bulletproof. Uh, just gonna have to chase it. This is the most crucial time of the fight, especially on braid where there's no stretch in the line. You need to be very responsive and have a very smooth drag. As well as make sure your shock leader is thick enough to be able to pull it over the lip. You're obviously pulling against a surge of the waves as well. A very nice bronze whaler, the only shark that morning caught on a cast bait. And note the very fat belly with all the sardines it's been eating. Well done, Rock. that uh, bronzy, it's my first bronzy, so I'm very excited about that it was a good size one. We got uh, 208 centimeters, so plus minus 140 kilos, uh, nice fatty. The tackle used was the Dawa Soltis 8000. Uh, I've got loads and loads of 30 pound underneath, and on top I put 200 meters of 80 pound multicolor J braid. Uh, really strong, as you saw, I was really straight sticking the fish in the break paired up with my grinder Elite 15 foot and uh, the trace I used for those of you who don't know when we come fishing like this we fish very very heavy I've got back to back hooks I had two sardines just cotton onto here 250 pound cable and a sinker that's it and I literally threw it 20-30 meters now the netters continued looking for some sods and some nets were still pulled in but no sharks were with them. The water got a bit low making the bank on the back too shallow for the fish to come over. The sardine run creates a lot of job opportunities and everyone gets involved in the fun. After Rourke's fish, only the guys with the drones were lucky enough to get some fish, being able to drop their baits way over the back bank. Many anglers over this sardine run broke their personal bests and had the opportunity to hook into and even land some really great specimen sharks. 